There aren't a lot of micro brands out there that come from Japan that are Japanese made. Uh, and that's a shame actually because a lot of my favorite watches actually come from Japan. I think that Japan makes some amazing watches and if they had more micro brands, I think they would be very, very popular. There are a few micro brands. They're on the more expensive side. They're like micro independent brands, as I have said before. Um, however, this is a true Japanese micro brand. They are called Ko or Ko. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, Kyoto. And they are located in Japan. These are Japanese made watches at very, very affordable prices. The packaging is actually really nice. This is a canvas bag, has a little drawstring. It's just a little added touch. Um, and, and like I said, these are affordable, but you do get, you know, this is the watch box and then you get an extra strap. So it comes on a, a NATO strap and then they throw in a second NATO strap, which is nice. Um, and these are sort of like, field watches. They are very classically styled, very classically sized as well. So you can see two boxes. Uh, one is the strap, one is the watch. So the watch comes on a NATO strap that is a green, sort of greenish tan NATO strap with some leather accents right there. Uh, of course, the watch comes with warranty information, just uh, things like that, you know, your guarantee card. So here is the watch and you can see it has a beautiful ivory dial that's actually signed, made in Japan right there. It has the logo at the 12 o'clock, just says automatic there at the six o'clock. Uh, outer minute track has some loom on it. The hands are also loomed in that cream colored loom, which looks really good. 35 millimeters, 45 millimeter lug to lug. 12.5 millimeters thick. That's including the domed mineral crystal. This gets an NH35. Uh, so you do have a date there at the three o'clock. It is a white background, so it's not color matched. So it does stand out a little bit. And if you don't like a date, that's something definitely to think about. Um, this gets 100 meters of water resistance because you do get a screwed in crown and a screwed in case back. The crown is very big very, very grippy, and it is signed really, really nicely, actually. Um, and the case back is also signed. It just says Old Smith, which is the actual model for this, and then the model number, which is that 90-002. And there's just a little bit of other information just saying it's a mechanical watch, obviously an automatic watch. Um, just a polished case, so the case is primarily polished. You have a little bit of a thin bezel. This watch is obviously inspired by military watches from World War II. Think the Dirty Dozen, uh, they say English military watches from World War II. So obviously uh, the Dirty Dozen, a lot of inspiration here, uh, but looks good. And it's a really, really tight package. So 35 millimeters wears very, very nice and true to that size, like a 36 millimeter watch, I would say, because of the thickness and it has pretty decent, I guess, lug to lug. It's, so it does wear like a 36 millimeter. The strap on here is a NATO strap. It is a single pass-through NATO, which I much prefer to over a double pass-through. So that does add maybe a millimeter extra of uh, thickness to this. So think of it that way. In fact, I'm going to put a strap on it so you guys can see what that looks like. Uh, but the strap on here is a single pass-through sort of nylon uh, uh, NATO strap. It has some leather accents on it. The buckle is also signed and you can see that there. It's just a press buckle, nothing too impressive. Uh, however, this is not a very expensive watch. I believe it retails for $275 uh, and that's with the extra strap. So this is the actual strap that it came on. Uh, I switch it out to this green because I really like the green uh, the most. I'll throw it on this black strap so you can see and then I'll throw it on my wrist. Uh, we will do a loom shot so you can uh, see what the loom is like on here. I'm not sure if the loom is any good, but we'll try it out. But as I mentioned, this actually uh, is $275, but if you sign up with your email, I think they give you like 5% off. So it comes down to around $260 for this watch, and it looks really good on the black strap as well. Uh, immediately, you can see that it does look really, really good. Uh, let me throw it on my wrist so you guys can see what it looks like. Today, I am wearing a Waltham. This is my Waltham Bathyscoff, uh, just an amazing watch made by Blancpain. I love this watch. I just recently put this on a very cheap bracelet from uh, eBay, uh, but I think it transforms the look of the watch. Uh, in my opinion, I just like wearing watches on bracelets, just kind of my thing. I don't mind straps at all, uh, but if I can put a, a bracelet, I try. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be actually making a video about pretty soon uh, a pretty weird watch that I just put a bracelet on. 
um, and I will show you guys that one. Uh, that is done, but, and there you go, on my seven and a half inch wrist. This actually wears really nicely. I think 35 millimeters is probably the lowest I can go on my wrist. I have a 34 millimeter watch. It's a vintage watch um, that I don't wear very often because of this reason right here. I think it looks a little bit small on my wrist. However, this I don't think looks small on my wrist because of those lugs. Uh, the lug to lug and the thickness actually add to its size a little bit visually. And uh, I think this wears really nice. I think it wears like a 36 millimeter. Uh, maybe even a 37 millimeter. I have a 37 millimeter that wears pretty much similar to this watch. So um, those lugs definitely do make it wear a little bit bigger. I like it. I think it's awesome. Uh, I am really impressed with this watch. I would love to have a sapphire crystal on this watch because, again, I just like sapphire crystals. I prefer it over uh, a mineral crystal. That's just me. Uh, but there isn't that much more that I would change about it. I would not put it on a single pass-through. I usually don't like NATO straps. Um, you can see it doesn't wear thick. Uh, I like it on this black strap. I'm going to throw it on another strap from Strapco um, that's a little bit sort of, uh, you know, just, just a plain strap, a plain color that is sort of contrasting with the dial, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. So this is a green suede strap from Strapco, these are pretty affordable. I think they're like 20 bucks. Uh, just really nicely made, uh, feels great, and very easy to put on. Uh, and I just think it looks really good because of that stitching. It just matches the dial. I think it looks just so much better on a two-piece strap. Not that it looked bad on the NATO. I just like that it's thinner on this. It, you really do get the benefits of the 12 millimeter thickness. So this is around 12 millimeters thick without that uh, dome mineral crystal. So um, that's the one thing I would do. So if I were buying this watch, I would switch it up and do that. You could actually take the uh, buckle off of here and throw it onto um, this strap and it would be it would be perfect. I mean, these straps aren't signed. They're not very expensive. Uh, I mean, you're not getting an incredibly expensive watch. This is around $260, um, but you're getting a Japanese made watch. I think this is something special for that price. Uh, I really, really like it. Very quickly, I'm gonna do a loom shot. I have no idea if the loom is good. I'm not expecting much at this price, but let's see, maybe we'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. So the loom is okay. It's not gonna blow you away. The hands are actually bright. The lollipop is pretty bright on that second hand. However, the indices, the little uh, dots of loom that go around the dial on that minute track on the outer dial, pretty much already fading, so nothing really to write home about. They didn't use Luma Bright on this watch for sure. Uh, I wish they did because this would be the, the, you know, the topper on this watch. If this had a sapphire crystal, I would pay the extra money. I'm not sure how much more money that would be. Uh, obviously, I think it's not that cheap to put a sapphire crystal on a watch like this, especially when you're having it that domed. Uh, but I think that they should definitely, definitely do it because the fit, the finish, the quality of this watch is actually really high. I'm going to do a lot of close-ups of the watch. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, it's just a well-made watch. It feels really nicely made. If they put a sapphire crystal on here, it would be a really good little field watch, little military-inspired watch that is good for a smaller wrist and just looks amazing. Uh, but tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I really want to hear from you guys. For $260, I think this is definitely worth it, uh, without a doubt. But I really want to hear from you guys. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, please also don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Watch Chris Blog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway. Thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.